Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Today we have an awesome episode in store for you guys. We have my beautiful friend, Helia. Hey, Helia, how's it going? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. And she's a law of attraction manifesting expert. She's a coach. She studied under Bob Proctor and she knows so much. She can help us with how we can live our best life. So with the new year coming and any new year ahead, any time of year you're watching this, we always want to live our best life in every area, health, money, relationships, success. So we're going to get into it. We have some great questions from you guys and let's hop into it. How's it going? It's going great. I love this topic because every new year it brings with it like a new vibration, new energy. And no matter how your last year, 2023 has been, and I can't believe we're almost end of 2023, Me too. you can start fresh and just having this intention. The intention is so powerful. Having the intention of I'm going to have an amazing year. Doesn't matter how things have been so far things can change from one year to the other year. So the new year brings a lot of uh, energy and momentum to it. Wow. That's why people have um, new year resolutions, but we have to go deeper than that because we know how new year resolutions go. They don't yeah. last long. I love that about the intentions. I think you're right. Like I've heard people say like, you know, a lot of the greatest speakers of all time and, you know, just epic leg legendary people we look up to say like intention is everything mm -hmm. in everything we do. So like, how do you make sure you set the proper intention? Do you do mm -hmm. that with like a lot of things you do? Yeah, with everything. I think I was listening to Oprah. She was saying the same thing. That's why when people do the same thing, the exact same thing, but they get different results because of their intention. Um, just be aware of what is your intention when you're doing anything, when you're starting anything, even as simple as starting to cook for yourself, mm -hmm. a beautiful meal mm -hmm. or going to the gym. What is your intention? Do you think you're going to get the result or do you think, are you thinking positive? Or are you thinking negative? Yeah. So I think like if we have bad intention with something too, you know, like say somebody hurt us and we want to like get back at them with a snarky thing or mm -hmm. like passive aggressive, like that can be bad, right? That's just like bad energy that we don't want to throw out there, <laughs> yes, right? Definitely. And one more thing I wanted to say is the, our assumption and our expectation, our expectation. I was talking to someone, he was saying, negative thoughts and negative intentions actually act faster. And that's so interesting. I never thought about wow. it this way. Right. But I first I wasn't I didn't agree with him. But if you think about it, he's right, because we look at people around you, people are thinking more negative than positive. Mm, We're always true. complaining about something true. We're always either it's too hot or too cold or the news, too much this. work or we are bored or yeah, there's always something so and the mind, escape that? the mind is always looking for something negative. That's like one of the questions somebody said what to do when negative thoughts arise and how to change negative thought patterns and transform them into neutral or positive ones. I love that because it happens for absolutely everyone all the time. And I just want to make it clear. Why does it happen? First of all, I think personally from the things that I read and my own um, experience, I believe this happens because the mind first responsibility is to keep us alive. We our survival system, right? We're part of this nature. Everything is based on survival. So the mind is not responsible to make us happy. It is not. It's our own responsibility, our consciousness. True. The mind is only looking for what is going wrong. What is the danger? Where is the danger? Messed Let up. me keep this safe. I know like, the mind is messed up. Let's change that. Let's take control. <laughs> like we need to take control. We have like, to. As if you're playing like a video game, right? And you're, mm -hmm. you're like just like channeling or like creating what the video game character does. We need to like take control of our life like that. And yeah. like we're a video game character and like program ourselves properly and live our best life. Absolutely, because if we don't, the mind is gonna run us. And so that can the be mind a disaster. Can be a disaster or it can be a beautiful thing. So it's a double-edged sword, you can use it. You can be a master of your mind or just let it run your life and be a disaster because the mind is just gonna look for negativity. It's not gonna look for what is positive. Mm -hmm. um, and it applies to absolutely every human being. So it's, as you said, it's our responsibility to control the mind. And there's, it's been, I've been studying so much. One of the things, um, and one of the people I've been following recently, and I love is Michael Singer, the oh, author of The, the Untethered, Untethered Soul. Soul. Yeah. I've been listening to him on YouTube. It's so beautiful when he talks, you really understand that the mind, you're not the mind because you can observe your thoughts. Mm -hmm. When you observe your thoughts, who is it that is observing the thought? It is yeah. your real That's self. You. It's yeah. you, it's consciousness. The thoughts are just part of this program, part of this computer. The mind is like a supercomputer. 
very powerful computer, the most powerful computer on this planet Earth. Super, super powerful, but you have to program it right. If not, it is going to, again, run on all just negativity. So the question was, how do we do that? How do we stop do we, negative thinking? Yeah, what to do when negative thoughts pop up? Like, yeah. can we ever fully control our thoughts? I think we can. Yeah. I think we can. Some people are there. Like, That's pretty awesome. Few That's people. Where I need to be. Few people. <laughs> we have to be yogis and monks and just <laughs> follow these people. No, of course, me neither. Um, but yeah, we can absolutely get there. The first point is become aware that you are not your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Just know that you're not your thoughts. And then obviously the thing that everybody recommends and it's so annoying, but that's the key is meditation. Yeah. So, and, and I, wanna, I wanna talk about meditation because so many people have a wrong idea about meditation and they get frustrated. So what is meditation? Me, myself also at some point thought like everybody else, the meditation is I have to get to the point that my mind is completely blank and there is no thought. Mm -hmm. So if I get there, I've got it. Yeah. Like that's, it is not the case. If you get there, it's amazing. It's an amazing <laughs> feeling. You feel detachment. You feel the best. Um, you feel like so much joy and enlightenment. But it is not the purpose of meditation. The purpose of meditation is sit down, close your eyes, watch your thoughts. Because then there is a gap between you and your thoughts. Mm -hmm. When you're watching your thoughts, the easiest, best, simplest um, example is watching the clouds in the sky as they pass by. Mm -hmm. That's how you look at your thoughts. They just come and go, okay, this crazy thought is coming. I'm worried about this and that in the future. Just watch it. Okay, I'm not the thought that's separate from me. Let it go. Mm -hmm. The next thought comes. Just observe it. Let it go. Don't get attached to it. Don't have any judgment. Don't blame yourself for thinking a negative thought. Yeah. Just let it go. And it's a process like everything else. How do you stop thinking negative? Process. Yeah. Practicing. Yeah. And it depends where you are on a negative level, I would say, because if you're way down there, um, which is something that I wanted to share that I, I recently experienced. If you are experiencing a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, and you're in a really dark place, it is very hard to meditate. Yeah. You can't meditate at that point. And it's, it's hard totally to do anything. You're in it's like hard fight to or do flight. anything. It's hard to create from yes. that space anything. It's really, really hard. Depends where you are mentally, honestly. Sometimes meditation is not the answer. If you're down there, I, there are different things that you can do. One thing I was telling you before this podcast that helps me a lot is the tapping, EFT tapping. Yeah. That helps like in two minutes. Yeah. I don't know the exact science behind it, but if you guys, if you're following, um, search even on YouTube, there's so many videos, less than five minutes, you tap on some specific spots on yeah. your face and head and your arm, and it relaxes your nervous system. Um, again, I don't know the science behind it. This was really helpful for me. And also music. Music is huge. so powerful. If you're sad, if you're going through something, don't listen to sad music. Just listen to uplifting, nice. I love rock music. Sometimes yeah. it's really uplifting. Energetic music has a lot of energy and vibration to it. So there are a lot of things we can do. You can go for a walk. And it depends where you are. If you are in the freeze state, that because some people go to the fight or flight, some people go to into freeze. If you're in freeze, you have to start moving your body slowly, slowly. You don't, you can't go from freeze to whole one hour workout at the gym. Mm -hmm. And you cannot do that, but you can maybe stretch a little bit, do yoga a little bit, um, go walk in the nature. Nature and is Add so in more healthy foods too. That makes a huge difference. Absolutely. For me, like the plant-based foods, the raw foods, that's a game changer because like all these things Helia is saying, like the tapping, the walks, the gym, the foods, like that lifts our vibe, right? And then yeah. we attract, and then we're like almost on a different frequency, right? Don't Absolutely. they say we're on different frequencies? And if we can raise our frequency, then we yeah. start having more positive thoughts and creative ideas. And that leads us to a better life, right? Whereas if we're it in is. that slump, like we're not really creating properly from that space, right? If we're in that slump, we cannot not even, not only we cannot create anything, but also we're not attracting anything. And we are attracting probably negative things mm -hmm. because our vibration is down there. 
And so the whole point is bringing up the vibration and the food is one of the most important things. Yeah. Raw food, apple. I was talking to one of my clients actually, it was an interesting point she said. Um, she said, people don't like to eat apple. And when you think about it, it's apple is like very light energy, airy energy. Mm -hmm. And we are used to very dense energy mm -hmm. in foods that we eat, yeah. like fast food yeah, and things like that. So we're not used to that airy, uplifting um light energy yeah that's why people don't like to eat like apple or yeah. fresh fruits it's just you got used to a certain kind of food and yeah. you can change it true yeah you can absolutely change it and feel amazing so meditation music tapping journaling journaling is also very good because when you put the th thoughts that are in your mind down there they are not part of you anymore so the whole point is becoming distant from your thoughts and knowing that these are your thoughts is not the real you. And yeah, and just um, knowing that another thing that's been really helping me recently is just knowing and acknowledging that life changes. It keeps changing. It's been changing in the past. It will change in the future. It never stays the same. Even if you're going through the worst phase of your life it is not going to stay that way it's like seasons like, it's like seasons like Jim Rohn I don't know if you guys know Jim oh, Rohn I love Jim Rohn he's just legendary I'll link his video down below it's like one of his videos on YouTube and may he rest in peace a freaking icon yes. he one of his videos on YouTube is my favorite interview of all time I'll link it down below and he used to do speeches about how everything goes in seasons you know mm -hmm. like winter doesn't last forever and mm -hmm. then summer comes and like just he has so many pearls of wisdom and just like even though maybe you're doing something really good and you're working really hard and then you're being attacked maybe online or or a competitor in your industry is trying to take you down it's just like he used to talk to about all good will be attacked right just yeah. like gardens like there's things that attack gardens and just so much wisdom to him i love that and i also i rather experience uh, negative moments sadness hardship in my life and pivot and completely change my life story than being stagnant yeah because when you're stagnant you cannot change anything true sure you're not experiencing the heartache or the the you're not going to cry you're not going to have a hard time but you're not going to even you're not going to have an amazing time either you're just yeah. in the middle but if you are going through something really hard use this opportunity that's what i've been telling yeah. myself this is an opportunity it's not going to last forever no so you might as well use it as an opportunity look at it and see what is here for me to learn yeah what is here for me to grasp on to change in my whole life what new story can i write from now if you have lost your job if you have been out of a relationship if anything that you look at it as a loss mm -hmm. See what is what is need, what is a new opportunity here? How can you pivot from here? Um, how can you write a new chapter? That's the thing, because a lot of like a lot of the most amazing things or our passion, our destiny, our purpose come out of like the worst of times. Mm -hmm. And you might not realize, and sometimes you think like, oh, this is just the worst of times, but maybe it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like maybe it's actually working in your favor, working in good, right? Like yeah. a few years ago when I lost everything and like went through a separation after 20 years together and like all this chaos, like it was just like literally the worst of times for a couple of years. Like, like I couldn't literally be worse. Like the worst, I was at like rock bottom, like in, in every area of my life, but it led me here. Like now I'm following my passion, following my purpose. So like, I think that's literally what I needed mm -hmm. in order to like get on the right path. Yeah. And you know what I'm going to add to that is that I actually believe when you're going in, um, you're experiencing something negative or hard, it is for your good. It is making you a better person. Mm -hmm. It is actually helping you. It is yeah. not something negative. You perceive it as negative. It is helping you to become stronger in your mind, you know how like I've been struggling with controlling my thoughts and I teach this. I teach mm -hmm. mindset. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a life coach. I'm a manifestation coach. But still, when you go through it, it is hard. But every time you go through something hard, um, difficult phase in your life, you only become stronger and stronger because you have to. You have to take control of your thoughts and feelings. Well, this is a great question we have. And this kind of applies to all areas of our life, like working out, eating clean, trying to eat more raw foods, guys, um, anything. How to manifest more self-discipline. Mm. Is that manifesting self-discipline or is that just like you're in control of that? 
or I don't know, you're the expert, how to manifest so more self-discipline. It's a great self question. Self-discipline is something that we all need. It's not that some people are born with it. It is not. We have to develop it. I don't call it necessarily manifesting mm -hmm. self-discipline. It is you develop, it's like a muscle. You go to the gym and you work on your muscles and you develop. Um, it's a m muscle memory. You have, to dis uh, you have to develop it. Well, the first thing is you have to have a goal and you have to have a why behind it. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you're trying to be disciplined in? Is it your um, health? So Bob Proctor was actually always um, saying that discipline or the will. So it's the same thing. Like having the discipline, you need to have the will. And the will is not to have to push yourself. Um, how we use the will in the program that we teach, Bob Proctor's program, is to have the will and discipline to keep the goal on the screen of your mind all day long. Yeah. So if you have your goal and you really connect with it energetically and you're so excited about your goal and you have a big why, meaningful mind, a why behind it, it makes it easier to have discipline. It makes it easier to have the why. And also one more thing I would say that I see helps a lot of people is accountability. If it's something that you're doing on your own, it's a little bit harder and more challenging, of course. Yeah. If you have one more person, if it's food or um, working out or anything else that you want to have more discipline, just have another person, just one more person to hold each other accountable. That helps a lot, too. That's a good point. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> And that's like, you know what, that's good about the why and stuff. And for me, like eating raw vegan, eating clean, like my why is because I just feel so much better and so much more energetic. And I know if like I eat the other foods, I'm just not going to feel this good. So it's like easy to maintain the self-discipline because I just know the drastic difference in how I feel. Mm -hmm. So let's say like if you're talking about like eating clean, maybe make yourself eat clean for like a period of time and then your body gets used to it and you see how it is and then maybe you won't. It'll just be natural to have that self-discipline yeah and like what you're saying bob proctor he used to carry around a goal card in his pocket every day and read it right all the time yeah he kept it in his pocket because he said when you so he had a goal card and we all learned to have a goal card at his time when he started over 60 years ago doing these kind of things and these kind of disciplines there were no cell phones mm -hmm. so nowadays what i teach and what my other mentor taught me and i teach my clients is to have the goal on their phone as a reminder that goes off every two, three hours. Wow. So the point is... that what is, you do? Yeah. I love that. The point is to connect with your goal and have it fresh in your mind all day long. So like, what would it say? Like for something like, would it be in the present tense? Or like, I'm so grateful that I have it now? Or would it be like, I can't wait to manifest this? Mm -hmm. Like, what should we put on our phone? Yeah, great question. So that's the, actually the first step in manifesting anything. It's having a goal and having it um, in front of your eyes all day long. And the formula we use is exactly as you said, we start with I'm so happy and grateful now that. So put it in the present tense. And then as if you have already achieved your goal. So it can be a health goal, relationship goal, financial goal, whatever goal that is. I'm so happy and grateful now that I I'm in this beautiful relationship, whatever it is. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm earning this much. I love that. Every Having month. It pop up on your phone every couple hours. Yeah, every couple of hours. And then you start to believe it, right? When you see it pop up all the time and you're reading it every few, every couple yeah. hours every day. Yeah. Then you believe it. Then you attract it. Right? And there is another uh, practice we do, which is a little bit harder, but it absolutely works. Is writing the goal down many, many times a day. That's many, many words, times a day. Maybe it's yes. worth it. So the other thing I recently learned is 369. Apparently, Nikola Tesla had this 369, and he said it is like a portal to the other universe, and it's very powerful. So I don't know. Maybe we can um, search it later on. And the point is writing down your goals three times in the morning, six times in the afternoon, and nine times at night before going to bed. Wow. It's a lot. Like but again, like in the present tense or like again in the present it's tense. It's all about the present tense, yes. right? Or, yes. Because otherwise it's like you want it and you lack it, right? Yeah. If you're like, I want it. It has this. to be in the present tense. Yeah. Even when we say in the morning, say gratitude and say affirmations, you never want to say today is going, today will be amazing. Today I will do this. I will do that. You want to say as if it is already. It's an amazing day. I'm having a great time. I'm accomplishing everything. So I am, I am is very powerful. Okay, I am going to start phrase. doing all this stuff so you can have the best year ever. I am so powerful. 
I am is very powerful. So make sure what you're putting after I am, even when you're joking, like sometimes people joke and say, oh my God, I'm a mess. Oh, I'm fat or I'm this. Yeah, I have a neighbor who always talks like this and I'm like, stop. Not good. Yes. Stop. Don't You'll do always that. Be like, I'm an idiot. I'm not funny. I'm gonna, like, I'm like, Yeah, stop. I'm an idiot. You hear that so much. What? People say that. Don't do that because you're literally manifesting it. Yeah. And, and again, and my other friend, I think I've told you before, he always used to say, oh, I'm fat, like with his gut. And then he ended up getting like a weight he was not happy with. I don't like to use the word fat, but like, you know. Yeah. And so yeah, we got to watch how we talk to ourselves. And, and, and speaking of health and fat, if you want to lose weight, never say, Bob said, never say losing weight, say dropping weight or releasing what? weight. Why? What? Because the mind goes after what you lose. If you lose something, the mind wants to find it. That's why people lose weight and gain weight and lose weight and gain weight. So just say what? I am dropping weight. Wow. That's so interesting to me. Okay. Explain that to me one more time. I've been filming all day. And I really want to understand this. Yes. Okay, so, so why you, don't we say lose? So we don't want to say like... Because if you lose something, let's let's say you've lost your keys. It's gone. You're going to go about, find it. Okay, I get the it. The mind wants to find what is lost. Wow. Goes after what is lost. So the subconscious mind, we're talking about subconscious. So consciously, you know that you don't want that weight. But subconsciously, your subconscious thinks, okay, something is lost and I have to go find it. And that's why so many times people gain the weight back. So Bob said, just simply, instead of saying, I want to lose weight or I'm losing weight, just I'm say drop. I'm dropping weight. That makes sense. I am releasing this weight. It's not Once mine. It's dropped, it's gone. It's not mine. It's yeah. gone. Not mine. Or you Bye. just listen to affirmations. I am my perfect weight. I, yes, I, love, I love my that. size, right? Yes. Just be on the positive side. I am perfect. I positive. am healthy. I am fit. We all got to get more positive. So say people have had like the worst year ever, the worst couple of years, every area of their life is just a complete disaster. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, I don't feel good. Me. How do I pretend? <laughs> How do I pretend? <laughs> oh, thanks God. My life is perfect. <laughs> Everything's a disaster. Like sometimes I'm just you like. You don't need to pretend. You don't need to pretend. There's a beautiful law called law of um, rhythm. So it's, uh, it's up and down, right? The whole universe. Um, we have dark moments, we have night, we have day, we have light, we have yin and yang. So it's law of polarity or a law of rhythm. So when your life is at the bottom and you feel like everything has been a disaster, as you said, and it's been really challenging, get super excited because something amazing is coming. Yeah. And you know when something amazing is coming? When you actually believe in it. That's, That's the big That's the part. difference between people who, you know, something happens, let's say divorce. Some people go through divorce and they become really a victim, get into the victim mentality and stay miserable for years and years and maybe decades. Maybe I've the seen rest those of people. Their life. Maybe for the rest of their life. And some people go through the exact same thing after that many years being married and go through divorce, but they shift their attitude, they change their mindset, and they move on and something amazing happens and their life becomes absolutely much better than when they were with their previous partner. Yeah, so it's like, who do you want to be, the angry person or like the happy person whose life totally changed? So how do we become the happy person? Just give us all this. How do we become the happy person? <laughs> how do we not hold on to the crap? How do we drop it? Just know that it is your natural state of being. Our natural state of being is being fulfilled, is being relaxed, is being at ease. It is not struggling. It is not being angry. It is not being jealous. These are not negative state. These are not natural state of beings. These are just the mind. Separate yourself from your thoughts. This is the most important practice that if everyone can do, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night, that would be amazing. That would make a huge difference. Just become aware that I am not my thoughts and know the poss there is a possibility, especially if you're going through something hard and negative. I'm getting excited when I'm going through something negative because I know ups and downs, law of that. rhythm, something good is coming. I just have to be in control of my mind and my emotions. Stay on top of the game. How? How do we do that? With all the little things we talked about, have a goal. Take care of your body. Take care of your minds. Take care of your emotions. Work out. Eat healthy. 
go to the nature. There is just so many things we can do. Just pick a few things, one thing maybe. Yeah, even every just day. a little walk. Yeah. If you're feeling like crap, a little walk and totally shift walk. your vibe. Yeah. And then shift your whole day. Yeah. Right? It and does. shift your whole life. It like, does. Absolutely. It does. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's ask another question. So somebody said, is it possible that beliefs can stand in the way of manifestation? If sh- if so, how can I recognize and dissolve them? Yeah, yeah beliefs, beliefs are, are everything. everything. Right? Beliefs are everything. Your manifestation, something really, this, this sentence is really powerful for me. Your manifestation doesn't come from your conscious mind and from your thinking. It is not just positive thinking. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. I, I, I honestly recently learned that. It is not just positive thinking. Your manifestation comes from your subconscious beliefs. Yeah, that's like the deep biggest rooted part. beliefs from your childhood, from all the traumas that you've been through. And from like our emotion and feeling and how we feel, right? Mm-hmm. More so maybe than the, just the thoughts, right? It is not just the thoughts. It is the belief that is deep rooted in your subconscious. So you manifest from your subconscious mind. You don't manifest from your conscious mind. So when we talk about affirmations, writing your goal, it is not just saying those and doing those on a conscious level. You have to really feel into those things. Mm -hmm. The feeling, so subconscious is the same as feeling, Mm -hmm. right? So when we think consciously, as long as you don't connect with your goal on a a subconscious level, meaning really feel it into your body, you're not going to manifest it. Mm -hmm. And your beliefs, all your beliefs are what you are manifesting in. Like whatever you're manifesting is a reflection of your deep rooted beliefs. Mm -hmm. How do you know what your beliefs are? See the results in your life. You happy with your results? The the whole world is just a mirror. Sometimes. And our life is pretty much like, we created it completely, right? Or do completely. you think some things are just like, no, it happened, like it's not your fault? Like, or do you think like we're the creators of everything? Well, there are circumstances, like if you were born in a third world country in, in war and things like that, there are those circumstances that are outside of you, you haven't, I don't believe that you have created those circumstances, but I believe in those circumstances, people still can create. Mm-hmm. Y- Always, I mean, two right? people can create complete different lifestyle in the same environment. And you can create from the worst of situations. Too, Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Same household, two siblings can live differently, yeah. can manifest different things with the same parents, same um, childhood. So we have a lot of power to create and manifest even in worst case scenarios. Mm-hmm. And going back to beliefs, beliefs are really powerful. And it's not that you change them overnight, obviously. It's through changing what I teach, paradigm shift. So subconscious beliefs needs to change. And they're, they're, Bob always taught us uh, there are two ways to change your subconscious beliefs and what we call paradigm. Mm-hmm. One is through an emotional impact, which is usually a negative emotional impact, like a uh, Um, painful divorce, a death in your family, close family, or losing all your money, something really impactful, negatively emotional impact, or the other way that you can take control and um, change your paradigm is through repetition, through repetition of the ideas. So you want to find out what is a negative belief that you have, especially about like so many people have negative beliefs about money, like mm-hmm. lack mentality. Yeah. Like it's hard to make money. Money comes, money doesn't grow on trees. Yeah. And it's root of all evil. It, we, so many people, I would say 98% of people have those. So first become aware of your beliefs. Look at the results of in your life. Become aware of your beliefs. And then start changing them slowly through repetition, through saying the opposite of it. Through listening to stuff over and over too, right? Like I sleep with stuff on sometimes. I think it makes a difference. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because some people are visual. Some people are more like they, they depends how you are. Yeah. Which one works better for you? Yeah. Or writing it down. Writing down is also very powerful because when you write down, that makes you to be focused on that moment and writing creates thinking and thinking creates um, an image in your mind. Mm-hmm. And we think in pictures. Mm-hmm. That's so interesting. When I like, I don't know if I gave you this example um, last time, if I tell you to think about a feather mm-hmm. or think about um, your fridge, you don't think about like F-R-I, you think about the, the you picture. see the picture, right? So pictures are very important. When you're writing your goal, you want to imagine that picture. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about these things on here on your channel or somewhere else, we say write down your goals. There's so much more detail to it. 
it's not just you write your goals down and that's it. You want to visualize it. You want to see the picture. You want to really feel it. You want to believe it. Yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> okay. On my channel, a lot of people want to know like how to, a lot of people want to know about food stuff too and diet and like how to eat clean. So I think this might be a good question for you. Like if people want to get control of their mind and like the cravings with food, say they want to eat more raw foods or plant-based foods or like get rid of the processed foods, but they have a hard time with like those thoughts just like caving in or stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for that? How to like get a grip of that and like create a better, like healthier year? Yeah. Again, for me, everything goes back to goal. What is your goal in life? Do you want to live the best version of you in life? Like this life is short. We want to live the best version. We want to be happy, healthy. And one thing I was learning from Michael Singer recently is that when people say, he was saying, when people tell me I cannot quit smoking, I laugh at them. And I'm like, what do you mean? You cannot stop yourself grabbing that cigarette. You cannot. Yeah. This is not your arm. Yeah. You don't have control over it. You absolutely do. It's the mind that you have to control, right? Mm -hmm. So the same thing as eating healthy. You have to make a decision that I care about my body so much. This is what, this is a vehicle yeah. I'm using in this world, in this 3D world. I need it. And I want to live a full, happy, long life. Everybody does, I think. Mm -hmm. We all want to live long and happy and healthy. So the most important thing is eating healthy. It's, again, it's just coming back to the thoughts and being your own coach, being your own teacher, yeah. being on top of your mind, just, um, you know, telling yourself that you're an amazing human being and you want to live healthy and you want to do impactful things in your life either for yourself or your family and the first most important thing is health when we are sick even if it's a small yeah. cold we don't want anything any in the world we just want our health back yeah so that's the main thing that's we want to stay healthy yeah. yeah and the mind can help the mind is really powerful so you have to at the end of the day we have to control um, take control of the mind and the thoughts and it yeah. comes with practice if you have never heard about this concept so far it's the first time you're listening the mind the thoughts you start from practicing one day at a time taking control of your mind and knowing that your thoughts are not you you're more powerful than your thoughts mm -hmm. and just practice it every day yeah and do you think like going into a new year people should make resolutions or they should make like a list of all their goals I don't like doing resolutions because we know what happens with resolutions. Statistically, people only stick with <laughs> resolutions until the end of January with the resolutions. Yeah. That's what we know statistically. So I personally love to come up with themes, not for the whole year, for every quarter. Mm -hmm. So every quarter I come up with a new theme and it has to do with my belief system mm -hmm. because if you change your beliefs if you change your subconscious then everything else the results is going to change in your life so you don't need to have a new year resolution you change your beliefs you change your self-image the person you are from deep inside and you, you take a course, you take a coach, you take mentorship. You have to do these things to learn how to do that, right? And take one theme. That's what I do for every quarter yeah. and just really focus on that. So maybe for someone it is discipline. Maybe you, you want to start 2024 yeah. with the word discipline. I'm going to be disciplined in everything I do. And I love the quarterly goals because it's not too long, it's not too far, and it's not too short. So yeah. you have enough time to work on yourself and change your subconscious beliefs. And you don't need to wait the whole year, you know? Yeah. And three were, months is perfect. Helia has a great YouTube channel too. I'll link down below. Here's the three-part question. So I lost my voice at a concert last night. How to change your mindset, how to be more positive, and how to me meditate. So it's a three-part question. Like, Changing our mindset, being more positive, how to meditate. Anything you feel like you want to expand on that? I know we've talked about some of that already, but. Yeah, uh, we talked about a lot already, but how to change your mindset and stay positive. 
I think these two questions, you can answer it with the last question, which is meditation. Yeah. Is, I know people are probably going to be annoyed. Like meditation is not, not the most fun thing that people like to do, but it's really, really helpful. It really makes a big difference. So try with meditation. And if you're someone who has a hard time with meditating, sitting quiet, use, there's so many amazing apps. And even on YouTube, there are guided meditations. Yeah. So use a 10 minutes, 15 minutes guided meditation. Um, and I would say for staying positive, the way you start your morning is really important. Key. So even that's the practice I was, uh, I've been giving my clients before leaving your bed, when you wake up and you're still laying down, first of all, you want to kiss your hand. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> you love yourself. And that's, I learned from Bob. Oh, I love that. Yes. You kiss your hand because you love yourself and then you're grateful for everything you love, you have in your life. Wow. So you say gratitude when you're still in your bed and you haven't um, left your bed. Start with gratitude. Start with loving yourself. Everything comes from you and everybody is so precious. We are all precious human beings. Yeah. Um, and start your day being really positive. And then if you have more time, go into journaling, affirmation. I do mirror affirmations. I love mirror affirmations. Just looking into your eyes and saying, I'm powerful. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am safe. I'm protected. I'm provided. I'm being protected and supported. So there are a lot of practices, but morning practices are really important to set the tone for the rest of your day and meditation. meditation. I love that. Okay. And somebody said thoughts on the Silva method and its effectiveness. I don't know what that is. Do you? Silva method. Silva, S-I-L-V-A. I I have no idea. No. Somebody said top do's and don'ts for manifesting. So top do's, I would start with because... It's so important for people to learn and understand because so many people have watched the movie The Secret and they think law of attraction, if I think positive, if I want something, I'm going to manifest it. I really want to emphasize in this video, it is not our thoughts, it's our subconscious thoughts. And what our subconscious thoughts is our beliefs, our emotions. These are all the same. So top do's is do work on your beliefs and your self-image. You want to change your self-image. How do you do that? There's an amazing book you can read and study psycho-cybernetics. I've heard of that book. It's so good. Really? And it's not just to read once, it's just to, it's practice, study. It has a lot of homework too. So read psycho-cybernetics and try to um, shift your self-image. Raise your standards in life, the way you let people treat you. Um, the place you live in, even if it doesn't matter if it's small or big, make it as nice as possible according to your budget. N- dress well, you know, raise your standards in all levels, in all areas of your life. So these help with your self image and your belief system. Mm. So you want to live a better life in all areas. You want to be healthy. You want to be happy. You want to be respectful to other people. You want other people to respect you. You deserve to have money. There's nothing wrong with money. There's a lot of beliefs that you have to work on. And the don'ts, the don'ts, one point that I want to emphasize is that, and it's so, so important, it's the key. Don't get impatient. Because when you are manifesting, when you're in the process of manifestation, you see nothing is happening. Meanwhile, everything is happening. You're not just seeing it because it's, imagine the seed, like when you plant a seed, how long does it take to, for you to actually see um, something, a plant or a vegetable or a fruit? It takes a long, long time. It doesn't mean nothing is happening. Things are happening. You're not seeing the, the things that are happening. And those are the most important phases that are happening. So don't become impatient. Don't lose faith because if you do, you're going to go against your manifestation because the universe always say, the universe always says, your wish is my command. If you believe nothing is happening, therefore nothing is happening. Wow. Yeah. So I just had an aha moment there. Wow. You're right. This is all just like the secrets of the universe, you know? Yeah. It's all the secrets of the universe and it's all, so much of it is in the nature. Yeah. And okay. This guy was asking too, should we keep visualizing what we want? Or do a one-off visualization and then leave it to naturally manifest. But can we just do a one-off? That's so Sometimes funny. I feel like it's a lot of work. Like carry around the goal card. Do this, do this. Yeah. Do this. 
or maybe if we believe we can do a one-off yes, then we can right? we do i had someone i interviewed someone recently on my channel that's exactly what he said he said i always uh, manifest i visualize many times but this one time i sat down i visualized for 30 minutes and it was a big goal he had for the whole year and it happened with just once visualizing I think he was uh, going through a really tough time in his life and he was at the point that he really wanted to change things and he believed he can do it once. So he did it. Wow. Our beliefs are powerful. Powerful. I love that. So this is a good question. How to cultivate an aura that repels F boys slash masculine men on a lower carnal corn stick vibration who treat feminine people emphasis because I'm LGBT as objects and disposable and manifest slash attract quality protective masculine men who possess sexual discipline integrity and a pure spirit so the aura to me is the same as our vibration as the energy that is we are emanating so the question goes back to how do we change our aura how do we change our vibration right mm -hmm. um and it goes back to how we are thinking and how we are believing if you have been in situations like that 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 person has been obviously because otherwise they wouldn't ask the question ask yourself how were you feeling about yourself what were you going through in your life how did you attract these people and what is it that you can improve in yourself in your self-image what is it that how can you raise your standards for yourself it might be that you're in a relationship or you're with someone that you're not super happy or maybe you're going through something that you're explaining right now. How can you get out of that situation? And as hard as it can be, maybe stay single and alone for a while. You know, mm. that's so powerful. True. We are used to jump from one relationship to another relationship and same thing happens, different places, different people, same energy. So we're talking about energy, aura, vibration. We want to go back inside and see what is inside of me that is attracting. I'm not saying you're consciously attracting these people. It's obviously not consciously. Maybe there is something in a deep subconscious level. Maybe you have to work more on your self-image. Maybe you have to raise your standards more. Mm -hmm. And and look at um, what we call it expanders. Look at other people who have other partners that are treating them really well. Yeah, because we and want see, that's that, right? We want to be treated well. Yes. And, yeah. and when you look at those people, those relationships, you see that, okay, it is possible. It is out there. So if it's, if it's possible for someone else being treated really nice, like a queen, it is possible for me too. And do you think people treat us how we treat ourselves essentially then? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And do you think if we put up with somebody treating us like crap, then they might start treating us even more like crap because they think if we we'll put up so. with that, it'll just I get believe worse that. and worse. And then maybe we'll be telling the universe, I'm okay with that. And then we'll attract other people that treat us like that. I believe that. Yeah. yeah I fully believe that the way we treat ourselves and the way we, like a simple example I was thinking a few days ago is that when, you know, when you like toast your bread in the morning, like you don't because you're raw, <laughs> but if you do yeah. toast your bread in the morning and it burns a little bit, and some people, they're like, okay, I eat it. That's fine. You would never give it to your guest or mm -hmm. your friend. Yeah. But you would eat it like it's okay. Or if the fruit is not like good and, you know, it's, it's something that you wouldn't give to anyone else, like your friends or someone you respect, but you do it to yourself. Yeah. That shows the level of uh, self-respect and wow. self-worth. Self-worth has been a really powerful word for me recently because if you feel absolutely wow. worthy in life, you will attract the best partner, you will attract the best house, you will attract the money, you will attract the best health. It has to do with where you are in the level of your self-worth. The more worthy you feel, the better things you attract and manifest in life. So how do we feel more worthy, especially if we've had like a messed up childhood that was one that made us feel like no self-worth so yeah well the childhood is we, i feel like so many people have gone through traumas and when we call it trauma it's not a necessarily a major event it can be a small thing but for a kid it could be a trauma so we all have those things we just have to work through it like everything else how do we work on your, our self-worth we start 
with kissing our hand in the morning, mm -hmm. you know, being nice that. to yourself. Yeah. When you're going to take a shower, take a bath, you look at yourself in the mirror and appreciate yourself. Love yourself no matter how you are. You are perfect the way you are. We can always get better. And I love the word better because you can always get better in all areas of your life. But appreciate and love yourself where you are right now. You are soul. You are not this physical body. You are consciousness experiencing this 3D physical world. How amazing is that? I heard it from someone that angels are probably looking at us saying, oh my God, that's amazing. You're living on this 3D planet and in this physical body and moving from place to place and achieving these amazing things, having a family, having a friend. I'm sure we all have things in our life, even when we are at the worst uh, situation in our life, there are things that we can appreciate about ourselves. There are things that we can look at and say, I'm proud of myself for this whatever it is. Yeah, and I think we have to realize like we're amazing even regardless of what we accomplish, right? Just for being who we are. Just for being you know? a human being. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're amazing. And okay, somebody said 2024 is going to be an epic and beautiful year. And yes. Is, and make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and Helia's. I'll link hers down below um, to make your year even better because we love all that positive content. But is there anything else you want to emphasize on how we can live our best year going forward? Like anything comes to mind? Anything else you think we should talk about? Yeah, I just want to say that if um, whatever that you're going through, good, bad, whatever, just keep coming back to the fact that you are not just this physical body, you're not just your mind, and you are spirit, your source, and you are way, way more powerful than you think and you believe and you will ever know. You will never know how powerful you are, your source energy, infinite intelligence living in this body. You're not a body, you're a soul. And your soul is asking you to expand, to grow. Your soul wants you to have an amazing life. Don't let the mind control you. Mm -hmm. Get a hold of your mind and your thoughts. Be in control of your thoughts. And remind yourself every day that your source energy, your infinite intelligence living in this body. I love that. That really hit with me in this interview. Nice. I That's love good. it. Well, you're amazing. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I love having you on. And the viewers, um, Helia and I are actually starting our own channel. Ooh, ooh, yes. I'm so exciting about manifesting. It's, such, it's one of my favorite topics on earth. So if we have launched that channel yet, I'll put it down below so you guys can subscribe to us. I'm so excited. <laughs> me too. And yeah, it's going to be great. And you put on great. Again, sorry about my voice, guys. This concert was just like <laughs> legendary last night. But Helia puts on like amazing talks. You do like these masterclass coaching talks that are awesome. So if you Thank have any you. upcoming, I'll link those down below too. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. have a free event coming Good. on uh, December 4 to December 9. It's a free five days live event. Is there one after that? Because this will go up closer to the new year. Yeah, I do it usually every two months. Okay. So every two months Perfect. I have a, a free live event. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it added some value. Go follow Helia. Follow this channel. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.